In the last several videos, we've constructed and then used two observer space-time diagrams. And the idea behind that is as follows. We have two observers, each in an inertial reference frame. One at rest, the other moving with a constant velocity of beta. And for a given ev event in space-time, the um, observers in the different reference frames will observe different space-time coordinates. And what the two observer space-time diagram let us, lets us do is from one diagram read off the space-time coordinates x and t for both Anna and Beowulf in the at rest frame and in the moving frame. What we'll do in this video and the next one is derive algebraic formulas that will let you go from um, Anna's coordinates into Beowulf's coordinates or will let you go from Beowulf's coordinates into Anna's coordinates. It'll be like a dictionary to translate between these two. And this will be the correct relativistic version of the Galilean transformations that we started the, the, um, the course with. So uh, in this video, I'll remind you about the gamma factor and how uh, axes are calibrated. And then in the next video, we'll carry through a little bit of algebra and geometry and arrive at the Lorentz transformations these algebraic relations between the space-time coordinates in any two reference frames. So before we derive the Lorentz transformations, I want to think again, just remind you a little bit about how we calibrate the primed axis. This is the axis of the moving frame of Beowulf. And we saw in a previous video that this is how you do it. We did a little bit of geometry and algebra, and we came up with this. That a time interval measured in the primed frame, in the moving frame, in order to convert that into the at-rest frame, we need to multiply it by this gamma factor. And gamma is this function of beta, where beta is the speed at which uh, the blue frame is moving with respect to the black frame. So a reminder, um, this is what that derivation looked like. We probably don't want to revisit all of this algebra, but just, again, here's that result. And maybe we can look over here to see uh, what I'm trying to get at. So when Beowulf measures one second, so that's when his clock, the clock that he's carrying with him at his origin, measures one second, what would be the space-time coordinates be for that event according to Anna? And so this is the work we did to get there, and we said, you know, actually Anna's going to see that at 1.09 seconds, not at 1 second. Um, why 1.09? Okay, because delta t, uh, excuse me, delta t prime is 1. The gamma factor for this example, where beta is 2 fifths, is about 1.09. And so 1 times 1.09 gives that. So... Um, in general, let me just sort of draw a picture to go with this. Suppose I have some time reading here. Um, T prime, I don't know, T prime A, for something, some particular time reading um, on this time axis of Beowulf. If I want to know what Anna would think about it, This formula tells me, just tells me that that time, from zero to here, that time is going to be just gamma t a prime. So we can use this to um, convert from a time reading on Beowulf's axis to um, what Anna would think for that time. And we uh, calibrate the x prime axis the same way. So if Beowulf has some reading, maybe this would be for a different event, x prime b, and we want to know, all right, well, what does, um, what does Anna, what does the at rest frame think for this? So this distance and space, which we could call xb, is just gamma times xb prime. And maybe, just to remind you one more time, what went on here 
is we said, all right, we're using the metric equation. That's often where we start with derivations. And then we said, okay, so Beowulf sees this still at his origin. We, in the at rest frame with Anna, see that um, Beowulf's clock has gone a distance x in a time t. And how far x is compared to t is related to beta, the speed. And so we used, did that and then just did a little bit of algebra and um, got to here. All right, so, um, so bear this in mind. And in the next video, we're going to use this to derive the Lorentz equations.